Hello everyone, myself is Vandana. I am a senior software architect at Micron. At Micron, I recently joined Micron. I am working on some of uh, the memory management. Sorry, I need to be here. Some of the exciting feature of CXL memory management as such. And particularly BPF is some of one of my topic of interest as such. I've done a lot of work on that as such. So today I wanted to talk about um, uh, securing the Linux kernel uh, using the BPFS, particularly the BPF and the LSM that has been used as such. Okay. So to talk about myself, I have been working on Linux kernel as such like almost 24 years and I've been working on um, a Linux device drivers, kernel, sub subsystems, VS systems like uh, networking, embedded systems, as well as security as such, okay? And I'm also like, like to do presentations, mentor people, new folks that are interested in open source, Linux kernel, as such. So today I'll talk about the BPF, LSM BFL. So basically the agenda is to start with understanding the security, what are the basic security aspects, that will look what are the existing security framework that is there in the Linux kernel, uh, such as the audit framework and monitoring framework, and then the existing enforcement policies that are driven through the LSMs, and how BPF uh, fits into all of this as such. And we'll look at some of the example demos as such. So when we talk of uh, security, so the security starts from the very basic, like the physical securities, locks and all that stuff. And other than that, we talk more security starts with other is the securing the uh, user accounts, passwords and file systems. Uh, that is giving proper uh, file access permissions and authentication process as such. Another aspect that comes is the monitoring, monitoring the system activities as such. And that has been governed by particularly like um, monitoring the log files, monitoring the act user active accounts, uh, file system accounts, uh, socket uh, network traffic that is there as such. And uh, all that things in the Linux kernel has been done through the one of the framework that is there is called as a Linux audit subsystem as such. And Another approach taken to security is enforcement. Right? The default Linux uh, security is the discrete access um, control that the security enforced through the permissions and capabilities as such. But if some more security actual to implement the something called what call as the mandatory access control that can be done through the enforcement and that enforcement is done through the framework that has been implemented through the LSM as such. And some of the examples of the SL, SL Linux and the other LSM modules that basically implements the enforcement policies, security and most policies as such. So when we say security aspects, like basically what we would look, be looking at it, the signals or the events, or the activities that is happening or the system as such. Like the, the processes that are running, they are executing and modifying the uh, different configuration. It might be file configuration or the actual inter internal kernel resources as such. And those activities, it might be very well planned or what is expected it has to do. And other than that, it could be something not very good as a not very expected. That is some kind of suspicious program or malware that is trying to go and temper or modify the uh, useful resource as such. So those activities has to be monitored or actions has to be taken as such. Uh, like someone, some, some application is trying to ro do some LD preload as such. It might be doing as it is expected to do, or it might be trying to load some library that is might compromise your system as such. So do all those actions, it might be legit or illegit as such. So the 
the counterpart of those actions or events as the mitigation as such if something has been tempered or compromised how that what what uh, uh, what appropriate actions would be taken to mitigate those damages as such so some of the things is like white listening uh, means like uh, one of the what is say the aspects of uh, dynamic kernel dynamic memory loading that is kernel modules so to ensure the integrity of this kernel modules white listening the kernel modules and if someone is trying to load some malicious program through the kernel module then what action should be taken as such also other activities like uh, about the external devices usb devices preventing mounting of usb drivers servers and also like um, if it has been encountered or it has been known that there is some vulnerabilities in the libraries or in the library uh, or in the binaries that has been deployed onto various servers as such in the network in that case the mitigation action would be like go going and patching all that servers with the corrected uh, libraries as such before it goes before it um, more damage happens as such. So uh, uh, one way that we looked at is the monitoring that has been done and in the Linux kernel uh, the framework that is there is the Linux audit framework. So Linux uh, audit framework basically provides a controlled access uh, protection profile that uh, basically provides uh, collects the information about the events that is happening that might be related to security or non-security events as such and that helps to track the uh, track actions performed on the system to analyze like what is happening on the system like uh, it works while listening to the events report uh, events uh, and it does the work of logging them into the file as such and then basically the application that are using that does done the monitoring and making use of this log uh, audit log or uh, audit subsystem basically they collect this information in the log files and then further processing is done on that uh, on that uh, events uh, that has been collected as such so basically uh, this audit framework helps you to figure out what so if something bad is happening as such uh, but uh, in this case of audit framework it does not provide the actual security additional security as such so if something bad has happened then based on the logs that you can you get to know that that is bad is bad is happening so uh, but the action is not taken as means as a security engineer what you do based on the logs you will go and update the uh, policies security policies so that further damage does not happen but here mitigation is not provided so uh, what you say logging and mitigation they are considered they are, they are happening separately as such the damage has happened and you are trying to you are trying to make uh, the system more secure based on the damage that is there as such so audits audit subsystem might not always be a good option as such basically also it is like uh, the framework that is part of the kernel so if new uh, uh, new policies has to be added or some changes has to happen then that that that, that delays the whole of the um, mitigation cycle as such so uh, so that's where we look at another mm, framework that has been provided in the kernel called as the lsm that is a linux security uh, module as such so here in this case the linux security module uh, basically it is used to implement the mandatory access control as such uh, uh, by implementing the security policies and that can be done without modifying the kernel like from the security point of view uh, application white listening has been proved to be one of the effective ways to mitigate any kind of uh, cyber attacks as such and those uh, mitigations, one of the recommended way is considered this um, LSM, Linux security module as such. So basically, mm, uh, it, LSM itself does not provide a security, but it provides a framework as such, whereby you can enforce the security policies. And this LSM framework, what it does, it, uh, it provides a set of hooks, uh, 
uh, which helps to me uh, mediate or various operations in the kernel means the hooks can be added at the various uh, kernel subsystem locations as such and uh, along with the hooks there is another security fields that is there uh, security field that has been added to um, to lot of kernel uh, data structures as such so all that uh, security information can be can be stored on, on through this white basically they are nothing but a white pointers so like if you look at the task structure you'll have a security pointer for that and these this these white pointers they are basically been used uh, by the security hooks as such So, just to give a uh, summary of this LSM that uh, they are being categorized as a major, major LSMs and minor LSMs as such. And the example of major LSM is the SA Linux um, app more as such as you guys might be aware of as such. And the minor ones they are also provide a particular functionality and they sit on top of the major uh, LSMs as such. And here in this case, basically, um, the framework, um, uh, it, uh, the LSM framework helps you to implement the security policies. And um, uh, it does through initializing the set of the hooks that can be added as such. So wherever the security has to be enforced, those security uh, hooks has to be implemented. Here, this is just, an, this is an, an example and uh, of the security that is done through the one of the LSM, taking an example of Yama as a um, LSM as such. And most of the code for this uh, LSM resides in the security directory. Uh, Security.c basically provides the framework, the core framework of the uh, LSM as such. And uh, the initialization happens with this sys security in it. And basically what it does, it, it will go and register the different security hooks for that particular LSM. So API that I'm just noted on is the uh, security add hooks as such. So we are basically, we pass the pointer to the data structure where all the security hooks are being initialized, okay? So this is this array that uh, talked about. So here in this case, again, taking an example of a Yama LSM as such. So here the hooks that are been defined at the P-trace, uh, P-trace access, then P the control and task free. So these are the places where this um, uh, LSM hooks will be uh, attached as such. So based on, um, uh, actually this, uh, there is a whole list of security hooks that can be implemented as such. So if whatever the uh, LSM that has been used, it will define all these security hooks and based on the policies that has to be enforced uh, when that particular uh, system call or particular um, uh, kernel code path has to take care of the security, this LSM hooks get triggered as such. So task free basically is basically this is the function that has been called when the process is terminating as such, when it uh, does the work of releasing all the resources and as such. So at that time, uh, based on the policies, if some uh, particular action has to be taken, then that has to be implemented as part of the second parameter that we see, that is the function that would call, will be get called when the task free uh, kernel API is called as such. So for example, like a Yama uh, P-Trace, Trace Me is the, um, these are the hooks for the uh, P-Trace system call as such. So the P-Trace system call basically, uh, internally uh, in the P-Trace.c, there is P-Trace Me, which goes and calls this function, security underscore P-Trace, and internally it goes and calls the LSM hook as such. So this is the way the uh, LSM hooks are being called. Basically, the LSM hooks, there can be multiple LSM hooks uh, enabled at the time, and they are like linked lists. Uh, uh, they are chained in a linked list as such. So whatever the function hooks that are being defined, that will get executed one after the other. So here, just to give you a flow of an open, open system call as such. So open system call is basically uh, the input parameters open system call goes the file name at the uh, various more uh, parameters flag as such. So here in this case, 
the system call is dispatched and the path name that is a file name is used to obtain the kernel data structure that is a file inode uh, file uh, file data structure and the inode data structure that represent the file that has been opened and uh, if the input parameter that is the file name is correct and the per, uh, permissions are been set then uh, it will go for the further uh, processing otherwise it returns the error then then the normal uh, discrete access that is a discrete access control uh, the security that is the default Linux kernel security where file permissions are checked as such. So if the, the application, the process who is opening the file has the appropriate permissions or not, uh, that error checking happens. If that succeeds, uh, then the uh, if there are the LSMs that have been enabled and the corresponding LSM hooks, uh, if they are being defined, then those LSM hooks will be called. So here in this case, like suppose an LSM is defined and there is a hook for open file, open uh, file, open uh, event as such. So this um, LSM hook will be called and based on the policies that has been implemented, that will be executed. And if suppose uh, you have a, a uh, the LSM uh, basically framework works like, um, let me show you if I have a diagram for that. So basically LSM, uh, LSM framework works, um, the f uh, set of the hooks that have been defined in the kernel and from the user space, those are the policies that has to be defined. So the, the policies, um, based on the policies, the LSM hopes takes the decision. Suppose the uh, LS policy has been defined such that the uh, file open should not happen for, for a particular a process, a particular process or set of processes should not open the files, like in case of a configuration files or network network configuration files, like every user will not be given the access as such. So uh, based on the policy, if the rule says that uh, the particular user is not allowed to access that file, in that case, the LSM hook would return an error and then um, uh, it would return an error and then that 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 means that the uh, that uh, enforcement of policy has executed as such. And if that if there's no enforcement or if that is, then the, uh, it would return the, the, the open system call will execute successfully and it will return the file descriptor, whatever it is done to the application as such. But if the policies that are been enforced is checking that it, it, is, it has to deny the operation, or does not allow the operation, then that, in that case particular, uh, uh, it will appropriately take an action and return an error as such. So that's how the LSM hooks works as such. So basically now what we wanted to look at is uh, the, the way uh, till now the LSM hooks before this LSM BPFR, uh, LSM was, uh, LSM framework is part of the Linux kernel that is, uh, uh, they, they are not implemented even as a kernel module that because it deals with the security, it, ha it is, it is inbuilt in the kernels, whatever the kernel, whatever the LSMs that are defined and whatever the uh, functionality it has support those are being used as such. But to cater to the security needs, another framework that has been, uh, that can be very effectively used is the BPF framework as such. So B, uh, BPF framework can be used to implement the LSM hooks as such. So here what we are going to look at is how this BPF framework BPF, uh, can be used to implement the LSM. And that, uh, 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 that is that the, this framework got introduced in fi, uh, since 5.7 kernel. Uh, uh, that is a extended uh, LSM extended BPF functionality. So basically, that allows the uh, security uh, is to design the custom policies, uh, which can be uh, injected into the kernel uh, uh, at a runtime. Means the the security policies can be changed based on the behavior or based on the requirement use cases as such. It does not have to be fixed as such. So those can be implemented through the BPF programs. So you can implement the BPF programs uh, as per the security requirements and they can be run, uh, they can be executed runtime or modified as and when needed as such. And that's where the BPF programs uh, will be exposed by the LSM framework as such. The BPA programs implement the policies without configuring the kernel or without using the kernel modules. 
So whenever the prior to this, there was always a concern of implementing security policies other than LSM kernel module. So kernel module was not a very secure way as such because there is always a possibility of having some bugs in the kernel module ca causing the kernel to crash and as such. So to mitigate that, uh, to come up with that drawbacks, LSM framework, BPA framework is a very good option where this dynamically the process policies can be uploaded as such. And as a BPA framework provides the secure execution environment uh, that also uh, eliminates the possibility of system getting crashed as such. As the BPA programs have this verifier as such which gets uh, uh, verified when the BPO programs are loaded and executed, when the LSM hooks are uh, reached as such in that particular kernel code path. So to summarize BPF as such, is it's a kernel technology that allows the developers to write the code uh, that can be loaded uh, into the kernel runtime as such. And it also helps to make changes to the kernel uh, code path or uh, add the logic that you would like to add as part of the security enforcement as such. And basically, like um, when you see a BPA frame, what it consists of the instruction set, the different types of storage uh, objects and the helper functions as such. And basically, it can be considered as a uh, virtual, virtual machine uh, which um, which runs the BPF program in the isolated environment as such. And that is done by uh, executing this white code uh, 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 with the verifier ensures that the byte code that the program that is getting loaded uh, ensures the integrity, some of the checks that it does that um, it does not have a loop, uh, infinite loop or a cyclic dependency is not there. Uh, and all those checks have been done by the verifier as such. And uh, these programs, they are uh, event driven and they uh, run uh, when the kernel uh, passes a certain particular, uh, these, uh, the, these are the BPF programs that get attached to a particular hooks in the kernel. And uh, whenever an application executes that kernel control path and uh, hits that particular um, um, kernel control path, this uh, BPF programs would be executed. And uh, there can uh, these BPF programs can be attached to different uh, at different locations as such, uh, or what you call as the hooks that can be attached to system calls, function entry or exit, kernel trace points, network events, uh, scheduling uh, algorithms, and various other places as such. Okay. So LSM. Uh, uh, BPF programs is like these programs allow the runtime instrumentation of the LSM hooks as such. So here in this case, you can uh, program, you can, um, what do you say, uh, define the BPF programs and attach to the LSM hooks as such. So whenever that LSM hooks is executing, the attached BPF program would be executed and thereby we can, you can, you can implement some policies that has to be enforced on that particular control path as such. Okay, so basically, what you could uh, this, this what this is helping is used to implement some mandatory access control uh, policies onto that particular uh, uh, kernel control path means as such. So here in this diagram, uh, LSM hooks into a pro, um, BPA programs going to LSM hooks, and uh, basically it uses the helper functions and uh, set of helper functions like suppose um, in the kernel uh, LSM hooks are been attached to uh, add some policies, enforcement policy, policies at the process level as such. So the different uh, hooks can be at the process creation, process um, uh, pr creation or exit time. So the LSM hooks can be added at the APIs at fork system call or exec system call or ex, uh, exit system call or task free, those kernel APIs as such. And when the, uh, when you see the BPA program, they are the uh, written uh, uh, user space application as such. And uh, this BPA program might be implemented, might go and access the data structures as such. 
so the definition and syntax of that thing has to be taken care as such and uh, once that if um, so also uh, another thing that is needed to select to send that data to the user space as such all these things is been taken care of by the uh, uh, bpf library as such okay and based on the policies the action can be taken whether to allow that particular operation to happen or not as such so all that functionality goes as part of the bpf program and the places where the hooks can be attached uh, and the policies can be enforced can be uh, for the file operations like opening creating moving or read moving or renaming the files or mounting unmounting the file systems uh, in case of process management, scheduling, the task process creation, uh, exiting the process or what uh, things that are needed as part of the scheduling, things. then changing user group identity of the process that uh, uh, you might want to uh, ensure that the, uh, what you say, the system calls like set, set UID, get UID and changing the permissions, all those are the places where the BPF uh, programs can be hooked as such and of course the network operations various network layer socket layer or TCP IP layer or at the lower levels as such okay so basically the programs can be attached at most of the system subsystems within the kernel control paths and these this is just to list down these are some of the header files that will give you the idea what are the different function function pointers that are defined which can be implemented as uh, which can be implemented and where they, uh, it can attach to the LSM hooks as such. So the requirement, uh, uh, one of the requirements is that this LSM BPF, uh, 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 LSM implementation using the BPF has been added in 5.7 kernel. So that is the base uh, minimum requirement that is needed. And other than that, some kernel configs that are needed uh, for uh, getting, uh, for making use of the LSM BPF framework as such. Okay. So these are just the, these uh, LSM. Uh, B, uh, BTF is one of the concepts that we need to look at is the, it, 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 can, it, show, uh, it basically is used to represent the format type, the, uh, the date, uh, because the, the kernel data structures are accessed from the user, user program, BPF programs, and from the user programs, the kernel data types, uh, the whole data structure might not be visible as such. So for that, the, uh, the one of the this, uh, a BPF time format has been defined, uh, which provides the metadata, which encodes the debug information about this programs as such. Okay, and basically it uh, is used to have an understanding between the uh, contract between the user space and the kernel space, like from the view program. Suppose a um, BPF program is written for task creation. So in that case, the task data structure. So to access the different elements of the task structure, the definition of a task has to be available with the user space program as such. So that has been done through this BTO framework as such. So that is where this kernel config provides that interface as such. And also at the at the application level, that is the understanding between the ELF file, because basically what we are doing is we are loading the binary into the kernel space, the, the whole of ELF format uh, understanding has to be there, which the lib, uh, lib BPF libraries uses the various uh, helper functions, go and extract that kernel data structures as such. So, Basically, as an BPF programmer, you might not need to know each and every element of the data structure. You can make use of the helper functions as such. Okay. So that has been taken care of by the BPF. So when we say about the, when you, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, implementing the BPF, uh, uh, BPF program, so that is basically a user space program. Uh, which uh, basic, uh, which has to be compiled uh, compiled into a bytecode that will be loaded into the kernel kernel space as such, and that is done through this. Uh, so the BPA programs they are described. There are different programs as such that has been described. So you have you have to use, the library library provides the macros for doing that. So BPF 
a BPF program as such and here in this case the library provides a helper APIs to deal with the LSM interface. The BPF programs they can be hooked to the kernel probes or trace points or the other events and also they can be hooked to the LSM interface. So there would be a set of uh, APIs for interacting with the LSM hooks as such. Okay, so here in this case, this uh, the the way it goes is like the BPF programming. It will, it will have two parts. One is the BPF program, and another is that this will be another application that would, would do the work of loading this BPF program into the kernel memory as such and attaching it to the different hooks. So that's where this uh, hmm, uh, this uh, this uh, what is it? What I'm doing? My mouse is not been seen. So we are, here, that's the attachment to the LSM hooks comes. And that attachment or loading is happens from the application uh, through the BPF system call itself as such. The BPF system call will do the work of loading that BPF program into memory and verification as such. Okay, okay. Let's uh, see one applic demo application that will give us a better idea. Okay, so this uh, I have uh, for demonstration purpose. I've okay. Let me see how. It So this is uh, my file that I am writing a hook uh, for demonstration. What we, what we will do is we'll implement a hook that will attach, uh, execute uh, uh, whenever a nice, uh, nice, nice is a system call that is used to change the priority of the process as such. Well. So what we can do is we can enforce some policies that a particular uh, uh, like as a security policy like every every application every process should not be able to change the priority itself for other any other process so this uh, policies can be uh, ensured by implementing the uh, by implementing the B B program and uh, tra uh, writing and tracing uh, the hooks putting the hooks at the nice system call so this is an example of a nice system call as such so here in this case this is uh, this is the program basically uh, what we're doing is, um, like, if you look at this, uh, this is the main uh, application program. Uh, the one part is the BPF program, that is another, and another one is do, do go and load that BPF program as such. So this is doing the work of uh, loading the BPF program into the memory as such, attaching to the uh, hooks the, uh, related to the nice system call as such. So here, the, um, these are the library functions that are being used to perform that operation. So here, this, this API basically does is loading, opening and loading the BPF program as such and attaching that BPF program to that particular hook. And that's it. Once this is done, uh, it is just waiting till that hook gets removed as such. Okay. So other than that, Let's look at the actual BPF program that would do some enforcement as such. Okay, so so this is this is the framework that has been used to tell us that uh, this is the hook that is to be implemented attached to the LSM as such. So uh, here you uh, here uh, that uh, the API is the set task set nice API where the BPF program would be attached. And here, um, basically, it's it's a dummy function, not doing much. Like if the nice value, in the nice value that is used to set the priority, uh, if it is minus minus, means if you are setting to a higher priority uh, value as such, then that should not be permitted. Permitted. So here, just checking the value. If it is less than zero, then return an error as such. By default, when you do a set, uh, when you do nice or re-nice, uh, the pri process priority can be changed by any 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 user as such, right? So if the if that 
some enforcement has to be done, some policies has to be implemented, then it can be done. And here, this is a very simple example as such. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to compile this BPA program and the main application will do the work of loading that into the memory. And what we'll do is we'll just look at the BPF trace pipe to see how this operations happen as such. Let me see if I have, I have compiled this or rather let me do it, I'll compile. Actually this I've taken, okay, so it is already there. So here it has done attach the BPA program to the set nice hook. What we'll do is um, uh, in another this is the pipe that is there that to that uh, what is it? Uh, okay. uh, we get all the BPF traces that comes from the BPF programs as such, okay? Just like something, the kernel log, with what we get as such. Just bear with me, <laughs> my system needs. Okay, so we are in this case. Oh, this is all about the uh, LSM using the BPF framework as such, or BPF being uh, used to implement the LSM or uh, Linux kernel security modules as such. So that's, that's all I have for this talk as such. Any questions? Okay, thank you guys.